Hi, I'm Martina Zemo-Kutman. Some of you saw me in the workshop yesterday already. Uh, I'm the last person standing between you and lunch, so I'll try to be short. Uh, actually, this presentation is a nice introduction into workshop three anyway. So it's kind of showing you the tool that we will use, and I'll quickly show some of the things that we're working on as well. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, so I'll talk about three parts. I'll give you a quick introduction about PostVision Channel. I think most of you have uh, heard or used it already. Uh, a little highlights on some of the features that PostVision already has for curation. Uh, and a quick outlook on ongoing work for PostVisio 4 that might be uh, targeted toward this. So PostVisio is the POSV editor uh, analysis and visualization tool linked to WikiPathway. So that's where we draw our pathways and then visualize and analyze our data. And it's extendable by plugins, which makes it really easily extendable with additional features. Currently, we have about 20 plugins with different kind of focuses from visualization to analysis to data integration, but also some of them are focused on curation. Uh, the plugin repository uh, shows you all, this is just a screenshot of some of them, uh, all the plugins available, you can simply install them from within PostVisio uh, and uh, what kind of features they have. So how uh, are there any features specifically for curation? So the first one that I wanna mention and you're gonna use today as well is the WikiPassWiz plugin. So this is the plugin that directly connects PathWiz to WikiPathway. So you can open your pathway, you can browse the whole database, you can search the database, um, but also upload a new pathway that you drew within the uh, tool. Uh, and if you downloaded an existing pathway, curated it, you can directly upload it again. There are several key sh shortcuts at the moment that allow you to check the quality of some of the things in the pathway. Uh, the control L is the, e the, the most important ones in terms of unconnected lines. So we have a lot of discussions of can we make the drawing of lines in a way that you can never have unconnected lines and that's something that we're working on. So this is gonna come uh, hopefully very soon. Uh, but at the moment, this is still, I think our users become more and more aware of this. So it's not happening so often anymore, but in a lot of the past pathways, um, we have a lot of unconnected lines. So with control L, you can highlight all of these lines that are unconnected. Uh, there are a couple of other shortcuts that are really nice for when you draw pathways, you can become quite fast in uh, creating uh, complexes or groups, even selecting all data nodes to change the color or the font size uh, and things like that. Uh, something that was discussed actually in the last couple of days as well is having a shortcut to select nodes with missing annotations. So if there is a data node without an, a, a, an external reference, we could just highlight those directly. Something that was mentioned by Egon as well, that's also a legacy issue that uh, in a lot of the pathways we have uh, pathways versus, so pathway elements versus graphical annotations. So for example, a data node versus a label. A lot of the metabolites initially were labels and we needed to update all of these labels into metabolite nodes, but we wanted to keep the connections and the information on those uh, consistent. And so we created the plugin. That's one example where you can add an additional feature that's very focused on creation into PostVisio. And what actually happens then is in this example, we have the enzyme, which actually is annotated as a gene product. It has an identifier, but the substrate and the product are just labels. So you can't annotate any, uh, uh, load any data on them. And so with this type converter, you then can really have uh, the annotation without redrawing the whole uh, interactions. And you can basically do this by simply right click on the label and then convert the type. You can also convert metabolite to gene or gene to metabolite without losing the information that the data node already has. So there's a lot of other features that we could think of or we already have in terms of uh, adding identifiers to interactions and things like that. Um, but please have a look at the plugins that are available and let us know if there are any that you would like to have. Now in the third part, I quickly wanna go give a quick outlook on some of the ongoing work in PostVisio for PostVisio 4. So currently we are PostVisio 3. Uh, we're in the situation that WikiPathways wants to make the drawing of PostVis as easy as possible. There shouldn't be a lot of uh, uh, 
learning to, to draw the pathways, but we realize that there's currently very often not enough semantic meaning in the interaction types. So especially for the RDF, where we then want to really make uh, semantic uh, reasoning and so on, we need this information. And so we have too many arrows and T-bars where there's no semantic meaning on them. And so the idea is that we kind of come up with a simple, basic set of uh, interaction types that are intuitive and cover the most relevant use cases that are used most often, but they have a clear semantic meaning and they do link to the other standards. So we have an SPGN plugin where people can draw SPGN specific diagrams. We have a MIM plugin where you can draw molecular interaction maps uh, and actually some of our basic interactions also are also based on these MIM semantics. But also, uh, what would our interactions mean in biopacks or SBO and so on? So we looked at all of these standards and tried to come up with a kind of uh, basic set that would help us to give more meaning to those interactions. And these are the, the new suggestions that, that was after a lot of discussion we currently have, uh, are these nine interaction types. Uh, goes from uh, conversion, inhibition, catalysis, stimulation, binding, translocation, transcription, translation, and then we still have this basic undirected and directed interaction. Uh, because in some situation, we need a more general way of having these interactions. And so what we now decided is to have certain subtypes as properties. So you might have a stimulation, and then there's a specific property where you say it's actually a necessary stimulation. Or you might have a conversion, and in this subtype you say, oh, this is a phosphorylation, actually. Um, these uh, basic undirected and directed interactions, so currently we're thinking that for those you will need to define a subtype that could be a causation in an AOP pathway or something like that, because there, for an AOP causation, none of the others would fit. And so we need this generic interaction type still, but we would um, at least predefine some of the options so it's not completely without semantics. The next thing that we're really working on uh, hard for a while already is the next GPML format. So the last GPML format was released 2013, and we really want to update this. So GPML is the graphical pathway markup language. It's the native wiki pathways file format. And this new schema update has really major improvements in the content structure and really makes a lot of things easier. But that also means that uh, the upgrade of all our tools and the database is really something we need to test and plan very precisely. So the schema design phase is nearly done. We have a good uh, uh, draft version of how the schema will look like, and we're planning now on how we update all the tools and the database and uh, make sure that all the downstream users of GPML are aware of these changes and inform them accordingly in well in advance because they're gonna be major changes. Then we did some work uh, on the ontology tags, also during the Google Sum of Code this year. We use these ontology tags to classify pathways. So it's kind of pathway meta information. Uh, we have three ontologies, the pathway ontology, the cell type ontology, and the disease ontology. And we are uh, trying to get improved search and browse features for those ontologies also on wiki pathways. This is how it's currently looking like. I, I'm not sure we saw it in some presentations. So for each pathway, you can have a list of ontology terms that classify or categorize the pathway. In this case, there's an innate immune response pathway tag added to the pathway. So if somebody looks for all pathways that are innate immune response pathways, they could basically search for this ontology term. You can then annotate them with the three ontologies if you see fit. And something that I wanted to add here, because we have also in the, in the tutorials uh, or workshops today, you'll draw your own pathways and you will discuss uh, what are good curation events and so on. So please, if there are ideas, we, we are always welcoming new ideas. And I wanna link to this GitHub issues page. Uh, it's very easy, you just create a new issue. It's like basically a bug report um, where you can just add new feature requests or bug reports uh, if you find them. And then um, this is built on a lot of people's work, so I just added m most of the people that are in the core team or were in the core team recently, but there are also many developers around the world doing Google Sum of Code projects or contributing code uh, because they use uh, GPML files or processes in their own research. 
and thank you. <laughs> Quick questions before we go off to lunch. Yep. I had a quick observation. So you were talking about uh, filtering the types of interactions that you would make available. And I just wanted to talk about the subtypes there. Um, you talked about phosphorylation as a good example. But I was just wondering, do you think you need to restrict that subtype property as well? Because you think of all the possible chemical modifications that are out there you could get into a really horrible list. Forgive me just yeah. for that word. Yeah, but yeah. It's so what we, uh, I actually started to look a little bit when we started this discussion. There are some ontologies that would maybe be useful that we could build it on. Um, but I think in the end, at least for the initial thing, we really need to restrict this. Uh, we're not going to allow any, any subtype from the start. So I think... We're going to look at the pathways that we have at the moment and really see, okay, what kind of interactions do we see? We saw a lot of transport, and there was no interaction type describing transport. Of course, you could say, okay, if it's the same molecule and it's a conversion or something or an error, then it's probably a transport, but it, yeah, you don't know, right? So um, that was one that we added, for example, that's currently not there, but the subtypes will be restricted, so there, there will not be an unlimited set of possibilities. But that's a, that's a good point and a difficult point. So for now, we looked at the standards and tried to cover as much of what these standards actually have as well and make it as simple uh, for, for to not know all these details immediately. Yeah. But that's a good comment, yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd just like to quickly respond to that. I mean, just because you don't want to use a whole ontology doesn't mean you couldn't use terms yeah. from it. And so, I mean, I wonder why... So. I mean, the biological process branch the go seems like it would provide quite a lot of things that you could use, and if and also just a, a thought of you know, because pathways have genes in them, and genes have been annotated to that ontology, it could be very useful for search on the Wiki Pathways page. Definitely, yeah. So the the, the ontology part was not that we're not going to use it, but we, I don't think we're going to like the idea is not to come up with new words at all. Like you know, do you want you want to use as much of these standardized words and things like that. So it's going to be ontology based in the end, but probably a subset of things that we think are really relevant. Yeah. And uh, just one quick thing to add on to that. Would you say it's true that uh, the reason for creating the new ones is more for the visual purpose and the meaning behind it could like be directly linked to the ontologies, but we need the, the visual. Yeah. Yeah. Also. So it's really to make it that, that there is not just an arrow and you have no idea what it is, but you at least know there's some conversion or some stimulation event happening. And uh, yeah. And the subtype is to, if you have more information or want to be really precise, feel free to add it. Yeah. Thank okay, you. So then I want to thank Tina again for her talk.